Our next speaker is Simon Taylor. Simon is the CEO and founder of Haiku Inc. And I can't think of a better person to come and speak today because really the theme of this program is um, you know, having a backup plan. All right, so we, I talked earlier about how we planned on coming on March. So that's an eight month buildup. You know, we put panels together, we have speakers. In fact, Simon was supposed to follow the FBI director in March. However, due to the Omicron surge, we had to back out. So then we come up here, right? Joe Bonavalentes pulls us together. We have a backup plan. We're not going virtual. We got the FBI director. We're going in June, whatever date that is. Well, we got June 1st. We're here. Well, planning this, we had to have even more backups. So the EVP, Mike Lockhead, uh, due to COVID protocols, he almost didn't make it here. So we had to have a backup plan. So I was going to be his backup for that. Um, we had a backup plan. Father McFarland came here to do the invocation because Father Patrick Nolan, he couldn't make it. So we had that backup plan. Me, I came down with a severe case of poison ivy over the weekend. I'm uh, drugged up on steroids. And my backup plan <laughs> was my son Brennan. He didn't know it, but he was going to come up here and have to do all of this for you. <laughs> So with Simon, um, we worked really hard with uh, General Gaglio and Colonel Nate Kearns. We were working with uh, US Cyber Command, and we were hoping to get General Nakasomi here or equivalent. And due to the war effort, we couldn't do that. But in the background was always Simon. He's like, I'm here to back you up. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he wasn't kidding. Uh, and since we've hosted this uh, event, you know, it started with Director Comey, he always talked about backup your data, and that's always a reoccurring theme. So I can't think of anyone, you know, truly the greatest of all time in data backup, the GOAT, if you will. <laughs> so with that, I, you know, Simon's a close professional colleague, but probably one of my closest friends. So Simon, you know, welcome, and the stage is yours. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, you did it. Oh my gosh, what an introduction. Uh, thank you everybody for having me here today. Thank you very much to the director and of course to my dear friend Kevin Powers. Um, you know, in the spirit of talking about Kevin's mother, um, I also wanted to compliment, compliment Kevin's son, Brendan, who just graduated from BC. Give a round of applause to Brendan Powers, he's here. He's an intern at Haiku, he's doing a fantastic job. You know, Haiku stands for Hybrid Cloud Uptime. We are the world's fastest growing backup as a service company. Uh, today, we actually back up and recover data for 3,200 customers around the world, including every branch of the United States military and several other three-letter agencies, which shall not be named. Um, we have spent, you know, over the course of the last four years, uh, thousands and thousands of engineering hours making sure that we build the world's most robust data protection as a service for both Azure GovCloud, AWS GovCloud, uh, and almost every other facet of technology that requires data protection in the United States government. When we began our journey as a company, we were a private, uh, private concern. We had just about 50 people in the business. Today, we're at over 400 people. We're backed by Bain Capital Ventures and are the fastest growing data protection business worldwide. You know, but something changed monumentally for us as a backup company, and that was in 2020 when the pandemic hit. You know, I think, you know, up until that point, I was a commercial CEO, you know, looking to make sure that we got as many customers as possible and we grew the business as quickly as possible. But ransomware attacks became such a scourge during the COVID pandemic. In fact, every 11 seconds, it became clear that another ransomware attack was being perpetrated. My team and I got together and we started thinking and ideating on this idea that no matter how many customers we at Haiku can support, there's always going to be hundreds of thousands of organizations that will not have the resources to protect themselves. And so we started to think about how we as a business could start to change the dynamic around ransomware. How could we educate the population with the institutional knowledge that we had to be able to support and stop these vicious attacks. What I'm gonna to talk today about is what we call ransomware readiness. And to kick this off, I'll give you a very simple statistic. There was a study done just a month ago, and 84% of publicly traded companies said that they had a ransomware protection plan in place. They then asked those same 84%, do you have a recovery plan in place for your data? and only 14% of companies said yes. So think about that for a second. 
You've got all of these boards across America saying, yep, yeah, ransomware is a real problem. Really, really big challenge for us. But not one of those companies, very few of those companies are thinking about when the attack happens, how will you actually recover from it? And so the stance of our company at Haiku in working in collaboration with Boston College and of course Kevin Powers was to think about how we could create a true public service that would help to stop these vicious attacks and help customers to recover their data no matter where they are around the world. Just quickly, I'm going to show you a couple of brief statistics here. 82.6% of U.S. organizations have been victims of one or more successful cyber attacks. You know, this statistic is so incredible to me because when you think about how many here in this room know someone who's been attacked or somebody's called you up and said there's been a ransomware attack. You know, the sad part is it's going to be less than half. And the reason is the ransomware scourge is almost like the mental health crisis. People don't like to talk about it, right? In government, it's one thing. But if you're a publicly traded company, you can't really talk about it. If you're a private company, you're looking out for funding. You're trying to grow your business. The last thing you want to do is go out to the media and say, yep, all our data has been stolen. And so what ends up happening is people take a very back-footed approach. They wait and they wait and they wait until somebody finally says, you have to tell the press. And I think we need to really undo that model because the more active we are in communicating these problems, the more apt we'll be to actually fix them. 24 times, the average cost of downtime over the ransomware amount. You know, we heard Director Ray talk about this, this that big question, do we pay the ransom? And so often we'll have customers call us up and those customers will say, hey, we've just been attacked, right? Should we pay the ransom and get it back? And we'll say, you know, that's not our business, frankly, but what we can do is recover your data. I will tell you that 90% of the customers who have Haiku and recover their data no longer have to worry about paying back uh, those ransomware perpetrators. You know, but the reality is the cost is not the ransomware crypto. The cost is in the business downtime. The average company is down for 16 days. 16 days when they're attacked by ransomware. You know, think about what it's like for a business. You know, some simple business, right? The margin impact of being down for 16 days is unthinkable. But now take it to mission critical infrastructure. Let's think about hospital systems. Can you imagine what would happen if a hospital was down for 16 days? You know, so, so the, the basic theme here is that it's not if, it's when. You know, I think there's a lot of discussion around what we call PDR, prevention, detection, recovery. People constantly think about, how do I stop the attack? There's a lot of great tools out there. My good friend Kevin Mandiant, you know, fabulous, fabulous company. CrowdStrike, fabulous company. But the reality is, there are so many more perpetrators and there's only one of you. You have limited resources, you have limited budget. The odds of you getting hit with a ransomware attack today, it's pretty likely. And that's really, really sad, but it makes the odds that you will need to care about data recovery even more important. And again, this is not a sales pitch for Haiku and our backup and recovery software. This is about a free public service that we want all of you to be aware of so that you can get better at recovering your data. When we think about you know, what verticals are actually under threat, and through you know, our own internal analysis, we've looked at this, we actually gave up. We started worrying about you know, which, well, you know, who's getting hit the most. The reality is it's pretty even. Every industry is getting hit, and it's not stopping. It's getting worse and worse and worse. Last year, we were saying it's every 25 seconds. This year, it's every 11 seconds. Next year, it's probably be one, you know, one every second. It's just not stopping. So there's a couple of things that we wanted to th talk about today in terms of how you recover from a ransomware attack. The first is, do you have a simple vocabulary to educate and rally your organization? You know, and again, we bring it down to just three letters, PDR, prevention, detection, and recoverability. And again, what I will tell you again and again and again is so much of your time when you are building a plan is going to be around the prevention. Every board member is gonna wanna hear from you how am I going to prevent this attack? How will I make sure that there's no risk in my organization? And it will likely be your attorney who will say, you can't really prevent it. You cannot say that you will absolutely prevent this. 
So the most important word here is not the prevention and the detection. It's the recoverability. When you get hit by a ransomware attack, can you recover? Can you recover your data? And how quickly can you recover your data? And will your data have holes when you do it? So the traditional approach for readiness is really unquantifiable. You know, what you basically just do is you call up your service provider. There's some great service providers here today, like Green Pages, and you say, can you put some data protection in, please? We've got this much data, please back it up. Hands-off approach. When the data gets stolen and you have to go back to your board and say that you were down for 16 days, if that was the approach you took, you're going to have a big challenge. You don't know if you're safe. You don't know if you can recover your data. You don't have a plan to recover your data in the case of a full frontal attack. So when we think about you know, the tools that are currently available for, for prevention, detection, and recovery, Having a bit of a challenge here. You know, the first is that in the prevention side, for years, there have been tons of security scorecard ratings. You can go to Accenture, you can call a consultant. There are literally dozens of different tools out there that you can use to see how apt you're going to be at preventing an intruder from coming in the door. But again, they're relatively unreliable, not because those tests aren't well structured and well built but simply because the, the number of bad guys, the number of perpetrators out there is increasing exponentially every day. On the detection side, you can do a threat monitoring service. You, know, you can hire someone to come in and constantly monitor your infrastructure, know when packets are moving too quickly, when something looks unstructured, you can make sure you flag it and tag it. You can make sure that you detect when an anomaly is occurring in your system. But what we got together with Kevin Powers at Boston College to build is what we call R score. And R score is the world's first credit score like survey in which you can actually define and calculate your ability to recover from a ransomware attack. This very simple test, which was built in collaboration with Boston College, in collaboration with Mandian, in collaboration with Rackspace and SADA and Gardner was designed specifically as a true free public service to enable everybody in this room and everyone in the United States to take a simple test and understand what they're doing right and what they're doing wrong when it comes to recovering from a ransomware attack. So just think about that for a moment. You know, the, uh, the folks are in the door. You are under siege. All of the planning you've done to prevent that attack is now out the window. You will call the FBI, you will call CISA, they will be able to assist you as best they are able. But the first thing they're going to ask you is, did you back up your data, and can you recover it? That's the first thing they're gonna ask. Now, that might seem very simple, but there are so many nuances to the way that we provide data protection, that if we do it wrong, we end up with data loss, or worse, we end up where the ransomware attacker holds our backup hostage or overwrites it. Right? So understanding this vernacular as a CIO, as a CISO, as a VP of infrastructure, as a CEO, as an attorney, as a consultant, becomes so incredibly important because we must be able to combat the scourge of ransomware, and the only way to do that is through true education and true knowledge. You know, so, so, so the way that this actually originated, and I love this story, you know, I think uh, Kevin and I were eating lobster rolls somewhere you know, down in Boston, and uh, Sabaya Sundaram, yeah, cheeseburgers maybe, and Sabaya Sundaram, our, our SVP of product, who's here today, you know, stopped by, and we, we started eating clam chowder and talking, and uh, over and over again, we just kept coming up to the same problem, which is, how on earth are we going to help companies? You know, it's great to run a fast-growing business, it's great to be backed by Bain, it's great to et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, but every day on the news, we were seeing new hospital systems shut down. And the one that really got me was when a maternity ward was shut down. And all of these expectant mothers are sitting in there and their data's locked out and the doctors couldn't answer their, or retrieve their patient files. I don't know why, but that for some reason really stuck with me. And I said, we've got to do something. You know, there's a moral imperative on our side to be able to provide something that's going to support folks. And that's where the R score concept was born. As soon as we built it, this relatively simple but comprehensive test, we started getting calls, and the first call was from Kevin Mannion. And Kevin said to me, I'm in. That's all he said. he said. He said, look, 
We've been doing this for a long time, Simon, and prevention and detection is everything. But nobody's talking about how we recover data. It's just simply not understood. Backup was always something, you know, out there in the back office. You call your IT guy. The problem is in a ransomware situation, this is no longer an IT problem. This is a you problem. This is a business problem. This is a legal problem. And it's something we all need to get our arms around so that we can be successful. The way that we constructed the R score, uh, again, was based on a FICO score. We said, what if there was a credit score that determined how well you were going to be able to recover your data after a ransomware attack? Ranges from zero to 1,000. Everything's weighted. There's two flavors. There's a web version. And we've got consultants all over the planet that are doing in-depth consulting with it as well. Uh, it delivers active live recommendations, and it's version for con continuous updates. Now, here's what I will tell you when I say that it's a true public service. There were a lot of folks who were not happy with me when I launched this. It does not make any money. It is purely a public service. We do not ask for your data. We do not ask for your company name. We do not ask for your name, phone numbers, email addresses, nothing. You go online, you answer questions that are germane to your business, and it gives you customized results that you can take back to your organization so you can incorporate them and become more robust. This is a true public service that is designed to help you, to help the government, to help public and private organizations across the US. To date, it has been used by 46,000 people. We launched it just four months ago. 46,000 people have gone and taken this test. I don't know who they are. I don't want to know who they are. We do not want our score to become any kind of vulnerability that will enable these attackers. This is a pure and simple public service. The topics that we use to determine recovery readiness are in four different buckets. The first, plain and simple, is your backup process. Do you back up? How is it tiered? How are you setting up your data protection? I've had a lot of folks who said to me they'll call, because they know it's Haiku who's behind it, and they'll say, well, I don't, I don't have these answers. I just don't know these answers. And you say, well, you know, have you spoken to your CIO? Yeah, he's not sure either. Right? It's, it, it's one of the best things to happen, though, for you. You've taken the test, you've identified a gap, and now you can fill it. The challenge is that so many organizations around the world can't fill that gap because they don't know where the holes are. The second is the backup infrastructure. Is it immutable storage? Does it have write once, read many capability? Meaning if somebody were to attack it, can they write over all your backed up data as well? Right? Can they erase it? Not all backup is created equal. Is it Linux-based or Windows-based? We all know Windows gets attacked more often. Which nation state are the engineers from? I will tell you that since the Ukraine crisis, we've seen more and more attacks on Russian-based technologies. It's just a fact. We then look at security and networking. How is your, your recoverability tied to your networking process? And I know it feels really technical. It feels like, oh, maybe this isn't for me. Maybe I don't need to care about this. But the problem is, if we as business leaders, as we have folks who run different organizations, different agencies for the government, if we don't take the time to understand these factors, we simply are unprepared for the attack. And we cannot educate the rest of the public. You know, so again, restore process, and then finally, disaster recovery. A lot of folks think that disaster recovery is when your building burns down. And you know, nine times out of 10, I hear, well, my data's in the cloud. Amazon's gonna be fine. Well, that's not the problem. Amazon will be fine. It's you who will not. Because when your data is deleted, 80% of which, by the way, is from human error, uh, if there is a ransomware attack, they're not going to be able to help you. So again, it's all about having a plan in place, just like we talked about in the last session, having a plan in place in terms of what to do with a ransomware attack. This is how do you recover from one. All right. And again, finally, a short recovery from ransomware. There's a couple of things that you need to understand, and these are pretty basic, pretty simple, but they're really, really important to sort of get our arms around. The first is you need the ability to go back in time. You need to be able to put the clock backwards. You know when the attack took place. The first thing that the FBI is gonna ask you is, can you recover that data from this point in time? If you can't schedule it, you can't see it, if you've just got basic snapshot backup, good luck. It means you're gonna have to recover everything. It's going to require more downtime. And this is all about efficiency. It's all about somebody's come in through the gate. They breach the walls. 
they're in your organization. How quickly can I get up and running again? Efficient recovery from off-site copies. You want to make sure your data is put in different locations and you can recover that quickly. And finally, with flexible recovery options at any time. So identifying the critical applications of data that need to be brought up first post an, post an incident. So, so one of the things that I think is really important to understand, you know, a lot of my colleagues will talk about data as the new gold rush or data is the new oil. It all sounds really good and positive. I look at data as ammunition, pure and simple. Data is something that can be used to attack you. It can be used to damage you. It can be used to humiliate you. It can be used to financially cripple you. Your data is a point of weakness and can, can be weaponized very, very easily. Making sure you understand the core applications and the data you need to recover is absolutely critical. Core infrastructure like AD and DNS are essential for any of the applications or services to become useful. Tiering, categorizing your application data, and alignment of your service level objectives. Oof, I know, it's starting to sound technical again. But here's what I'll say. Understanding how frequently you are backing up your data and how you're going to recover it in case of an incident is the most important thing you can do. Take the time to understand your recovery path. So in conclusion, I'd encourage everyone here to check out our score, getourscore.org. Again, thank you to Boston College and Kevin Powers for helping us put this together. Leverage the free consultation, create a ransomware recovery plan, and identify the critical applications and data that are critical to bring up post an incident. Thank you very much. Even though you're not government, we went all out for you as well. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Simon, thank you so thank much. You, we appreciate everything. Um, all right, so this is, um, wow, we're closing at lunch. But thanks to uh, Mandiant uh, and Kevin Mandiant, they bought you lunch. So we have a lunch for all of you here today. And uh, while we close things out here, uh, again, this was really, truly the, the backup BCCS. And I, I can't thank uh, Special Agent in Charge, uh, Joe uh, Bonavalenta, enough for really driving this forward. Um, everything we're doing here at BC, I mean, the COVID, uh, you know, really could have shut us down, you know, especially our program. It didn't. Instead, we came out bigger. We have more students. I think we're at like over 150 students. You add in the law students who take our classes, we're at about 175. Out of those students, I think 15 of them are FBI agents uh, from all over the country. Uh, our program is getting stronger and better. And we have Jim Burrell, he is our lead uh, researcher here. We have a research program now that we're going after government grants, really focused on policy, law, and governance. Uh, so things are going great here. And really, it's all thanks to you. It really truly is an academic, government, private industry collaboration. We're here. Um, you know, I'm sure BC's here to make money, but I'm not, clearly. Uh, and, Simon, <laughs> and Simon's right. When we got involved in working on our score, it really was not about, like, hey, how can we market this? It was, it was just really cool getting folks like Simon, Kevin Mandy, and others together saying, like, we're not here to make any money. Let's do a service. And that's what everything we're doing here at Boston College is truly about. It's service to others. And with that, thank you, everyone. And uh, we'll see you back here next year. Probably sometime in June. I won't know, though. All right. Thank you. <laughs>